All right, welcome back. We have been talking about this proposed amendment to Iowa's Constitution. Joining us now to offer a different perspective, Kaylee Rogers. You are a group lead with Moms Demand Action. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Of course. Um, before we dive into this proposed amendment, I want our viewers to really kind of get a sense of who you are and the organization so they know what perspective they're hearing from. Tell us about yourself and tell us about Moms Demand Action. Sure. Uh, so I am a social worker by day and a volunteer with Moms Demand Action um, the rest of the time. And I am um, the local group lead. I'm a volunteer, just like all of us. Um, and Moms Demand Action is really a grassroots movement of mothers and others who are committed to ending gun violence. It's one thing to read through this proposed amendment, but I want to understand uh, when you read it, what do you see and um, what kind of uh, sort of should folks know about it? Yeah, so um, I guess what's a little bit tricky is that the amendment starts off as sounding very similar to the uh, Second Amendment in the Constitution of the United States. So, um, so the first part is not really concerning. We have that already through the Constitution of the United States. So um, the part that makes this very extreme is the piece about strict scrutiny at the end of it. Um, so that really opens the door to legal challenges to the very few laws we already have on the books in Iowa and also any future laws related to guns and gun safety. Um, why is that particular phrase um, so important, um, meaning so important to really kind of understand and focus on from your perspective? So strict scrutiny is the highest form of judicial review um, that is not a part of the federal constitution amendment. Um, it's, uh, it just means that there's more wiggle room to challenge uh, anything that someone could perceive would infringe on this. So that opens up the door to um, domestic abusers or felons who are saying this violates, you know, this law that I can't have a firearm violates um, this constitutional amendment. Let's dive into that a little bit. And this is, I, I want to challenge you a little bit just to, so our viewers understand, um, is this something that you have, that you have seen happen perhaps in other states that have this sort of language in their constitution or are there specific laws maybe on the books or in the works that this could affect? So yes, so there are three states in the US that have similar language to this and those are Alabama and Louisiana and Missouri. And coincidentally or not, they are um, three of the five top gun death rates in our country. And, and you, you said coincidentally or not, so do you, do you believe that there is a connection there? I do. Um, it just shows the level of um, commitment to gun safety or, or the lack thereof in their, in their laws that they're producing. And I think you're sort of getting to my next question. Um, this is oftentimes when you're talking about any type of gun legislation, or in this case, an amendment to a constitution, um, there is this natural tendency to think about the legislation and then connect that to gun violence. In some cases, increased gun violence, in some cases, decreased gun violence. And of course, then the images come to mind, the things we've seen on, on the news, uh, of shootings, whether it's at a mall, a school, a hospital. Um, do you see sort of a direct connection um, between these two types of things? I see it more as a, um, a priority, if it's in line with the priority of gun safety or not. So if, if we're passing legislation that restricts our ability to keep or create new gun safety legislation, um, then keeping us safe is not a priority. Um, folks who perhaps disagree with you will say, they'll make the argument that, hey, there are a lot of rights um, that 
um, whether it's the state constitution or the United States Constitution, helps protect. This is one of those that, if we value those rights, wouldn't we want them to go through strict scrutiny before um, perhaps they are impacted in some way? Um, do you see that differently? Would you agree with that sentiment? Kind of help me navigate that a little bit. Sure. So I think it's all about balance. Um, yes, we, we as Moms Demand Action support the Second Amendment. Um, we support that right. However, we also support the right of, of everyone else to be safe in our communities, right? And so we have to find a balance there. We have to make sure that we are um, that we're keeping our community safe. As your organization gets out there and talks to folks, I'm sure there, you encounter a lot of folks who agree with you, um, but there may be folks who disagree with you. There may be folks who are unclear on this because they are getting uh, different perspectives. What are you hearing? What are you seeing? Right, so I think the biggest, um, the biggest thing we're hearing is surprise and shock. Um, most people, you know, unless you're an attorney, you don't really understand what strict scrutiny means which is normal. Um, and also, I think a lot of Iowans are also not aware of how few gun safety laws we actually have left. So I think those two sentiments are kind of at the forefront when we're talking about this with people. OK. Um, we've covered a, a number of issues here. Um, the last thing I want to ask you is, what did I miss? What did I not ask you about? What do you want to make sure that our viewers uh, know about this issue? Yeah, so the bottom line is that this will not make Iowa safer, pure and simple. Uh, the other thing is it will be on the back of the ballot, so be sure when you go to vote that you turn it over and vote no. Okay, Kaylee Rogers, thank you so much for taking the time to, to come in the studio and talk about this, a very important issue. Um, and, and hopefully it helps educate our viewers. Yes, thank you for having me.